Hello. We're running a little bit late. I'm Matt. That's Jay back there. And for the next 48 hours, we're exploring Scotland's largest city, Glasgow. Coming up, we visit some museums, go on a walking tour and try some incredible food. Plus, stick around until the end of the video to find out what we thought about our visit to this brilliant city. Our short 48-hour visit to Glasgow has coincided with some rather blustery and wet weather. Thankfully, Glasgow has plenty of indoor attractions, including the Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum. Originally opened in 1901 and reopened in 2007 after a three-year multi-million pound refurbishment, Kelvin Grove's collection covers natural history, antiquities, design, architecture, fine arts and the history of Scotland and Glasgow. Entry is completely free. We really enjoyed this exhibition called Putting Ourselves in the Picture, which tells the story of migrants who now call Glasgow their home. This rather eerie installation by artist Sophie Cave is called Floating Heads. Who'd have thought? All that art and culture has made us thirsty. Time for a pre-dinner drink at a 100% vegan pub called The 78. During our visit, the pub's kitchen was home to a Mexican street food pop-up. We tried some of their smashed potatoes, purely for research purposes, of course. From the pub, we walked to nearby Suisi, a pan-Asian-inspired vegan restaurant opened in 2019 by Malaysian-born Mama Lim. We started with some tempeh crisps before moving on to a Lion's Mane Mushroom Randang and a Tofu Laksa. We finished on a coconut pancake. Everything was superb. The next morning and oh, the sun's out. Okay, shh, don't say anything more about it. We'll scare it off. Anyway, we're taking the subway into the city center. The Glasgow subway is just one part of the city's extensive and inexpensive public transport network. It's the third oldest underground railway in Europe and has an annual ridership of around 8 million. The network's single line is a 10 km loop with trains running in each direction. These tiny aging trains are currently in the process of being replaced with shiny new rolling stock. So go for a ride soon before you miss out on the nostalgia. We alight at St Enoch station to find the sunshine's gone, but our spirit will not be crushed by a bit of drizzle. After all, there's freshly baked pastries to be sampled. It's rare for a vegan to be spoiled for choice, especially when it comes to baked goods. The Dorky French has only been opened since June 2023, but it's already caused quite a stir, even with non-vegans. We opt for a supreme roll and a creme brulee Danish. Creamy, buttery, flaky, laminated perfection. Mm. 
energized with pastries and hot chocolate, we head off to the Gallery of Modern Art, otherwise known as GOMA. Entry is free. Lunch is at the brilliantly titled Glas Vegan. We've got a smoked salmon bagel and a sweet potato soup. Whenever we're visiting somewhere new, we're always keen to ensure that we give back in some way to our destination. There are so many ways in which we do this, and one of those ways is by embarking on walking tours that have a social impact or are run by charities and non-profits. This walking tour that we're on is run by Invisible Cities, a social enterprise that trains and employs people who have previously experienced homelessness. We have a tool called Giveback that helps you to find tours just like this one, as well as animal sanctuaries, beach cleans, social enterprise cafes, cultural exchanges, well-being experiences, and much, much more. To get free access, go to heretotravel.com slash giveback or Click the link in the description. Angie, our guide, has taken us from the People's Palace back into the city centre, where we enjoy seeing some grand buildings and some great street art. Continuing our theme of giving back, time for a quick chai latte at Social Bite, a social enterprise cafe who's also trying to tackle homelessness. Customers are encouraged to pay for a coffee for someone else who may not be able to afford to. After a bit of shopping, it's time for some dinner at Mono. Mono is often home to live music. As well as serving an extensive plant-based menu, there's also a record shop attached. We've got toe fish and chips, with mushy peas on the side of course, and a Cubano pizza, pulled barbecue jackfruit, smoked cheese, dill pickle and Carolina mustard. As well as the subway, there's also mainline Scott Rail trains running through the city centre. We make use of one of them to get back to our hotel. It's our final morning in Glasgow and clearly we've not had enough baked treats. So we've stopped off at the entirely plant-based Honey Trap Bakery. Oh, how are we going to choose? Rather than standing in the street, we've decided to eat our brunch at the cafe at the nearby Burrell Collection. What is this one? This one, I think it was like... 
Mmm. Um, like a vegan feta and a tomato. We were really pleased to discover that our visit had coincided with an event celebrating the Persian New Year. The Burrell Collection comprises of over 9,000 pieces of art, sculpture and artefacts from all over the world, all housed in a bright and airy space. Entry is completely free. That was 48 hours in Glasgow. Went quick. Yeah, been here before, like that was 10 years ago. It was our first trip together, a bit different. Um, we were staying in a tent. <laughs> um, so Not far from here. Yeah. yeah in this park. very park. Yeah. Um, so it was like seeing it fresh again. What was your, well, first of all, how would you sum up Glasgow? Glasgow is, it's a big city. Um, it, has a, it has a grit, but it also has a palpable passion mm -hmm. um you know it, it seems like it's it is a city for for and by the people and uh you see that everywhere in fact glasgow mm -hmm. made made was it made by people people um, make glasgow people make glasgow is the slogan yeah i guess a few key words that might summarize it um cool yep cultural mm -hmm. foodie destination especially oh, vegan. yes Ex excellent Oh, I don't know, it's got like a realness, as you say, it's like grit and grandeur. And um, mm. I think I relate to it because it reminds me of Liverpool a lot. Yeah. So if you like Liverpool, a lot of grand you buildings. probably like Glasgow. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you if you really want to get to grips with that, do things where you can meet the locals. And I think, you know, the tour we did with Invisible Cities is a good example of that, of, you know, our guide was a real Glaswegian, thick, thick accent, mm. lives here, knows and could show us like, spots you wouldn't normally visit um, and that's one of the great ways that you can give back as well as a traveller um, is finding like social enterprise um, tours but also social enterprise based cafes like the one that we went to yeah there's many more but we've made it convenient for you so you don't have to put in all the hard work doing the research mm -hmm. we've got give back it's a free tool that you can access squirrel on our website so i've got that way and you can find out more about it in this video and also in the link in the caption below got details to it yeah so yeah have a look see what fun kind of things you can do so you can give back on your travels um, but also locally you know it's good to be a tourist in your own city as well yeah, yeah. it's completely free here's travel.com slash give back but for now from glasgow thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on our next trip <laughs>